You can tell I've been watering it. <laughs> it's fine. Should we just go ahead and pick the stuff out? My rock. Found a cool rock. Hi everybody, welcome to Brainstorm Makers. I'm Irene. I'm Henry. And today we're going to talk about one of the hardest things that you have to deal with as a gardener, at least for me. Not for me, I'm ruthless. That's right. <laughs> but you used to work in a professional greenhouse when you were a kid. Yeah. So That yeah, helps. It does. Um, one of the hardest things when you're growing plants is giving up on them or deciding that they're past their best of use by date and you should just move on to something else. And these peas are an excellent example. We started these early in the greenhouse uh, in trays and they popped up. And I mean, this was when it was still pretty brutally cold outside. And the spring continued forever, it seems like. And we still, we still have one more night where we have to be kind of careful. Did the same thing last year too. We had a very late spring. It was so exciting to see the stuff popping up. But if I were to go through this whole thing right now, I, there might be like maybe three pods on this whole thing. Now, in the past, what I would have done is I would have probably watered it and fertilized it and babied it. And in about two weeks. And you would have anguished over it. And anguished over it, sang its songs every day, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sort of things. Read it in a magazine, I don't know. Uh, and in, in two or three weeks, I would have a handful more pods. Like there's probably, see, and most of these are just, they're not that, they're not quality. There's a few on here. If I were to let them, if I were to really water and fuss with, I might be able to get something semi-edible out of here. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip these suckers out. We're really trying this year to be more ruthless about space. But... Back to the problems with this, they've been badly damaged, and, and a lot of the, the the seed pods and stuff like this, you can see the scarring on them from the thrips. Um, but more important than the fact that it would take me two or three weeks to get these revitalized enough to produce a half a cup of peas, is I have I have lettuce waiting over here. I have it's a whole tray of lettuce. It's been waiting for a while. It's been waiting for a little while, and we were trying to decide what to do with it because we originally planned to plant it outside in the ground and then we've had so many dist not distractions but so many delays because of the weather that i decided the best plan to do is actually rip these out put the lettuce in here and put that in the side yard of the greenhouse here so that's what we're going to do now if you look really closely here you can see at the base of some of these i fertilized this probably yeah two weeks ago it's starting to put out some new plant materials. But you know, the weather is not gonna get any cooler. It's just gonna get hotter. Plants don't, like peas, don't particularly care for hot weather. Uh, that's why we always try and get them in early. And we're just gonna say, bye and thanks for all the peas because, you know, we enjoyed them. We enjoyed them so much. I would bring a handful of pods into the kitchen and we'd eat it with breakfast. But, uh, it's time to just move on with these guys. So I'm just going to pull them all out. You know, I suppose if I had a thousand acres, I could decide to leave these in, but I don't. I have minimum viable potting spots. And therefore, we're going to use this for something that's really going to do us some good. Um, we're kind of in between lettuce crops right now. We had uh, a bunch of our old lettuce bolted suddenly and uh, wasn't quite ready with the new stuff. Now this white junk that's on here is not a mineral deposit. It is actually because we were washing uh, perlite the other day and 
for the hydroponic system and I dumped the wash water in here because it's water. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna stir this all up. Because it does tend to develop a crust on the uh, top. And this also lets me see if I've got anybody who's moved in here in terms of a bug or anything. I am going to stir in a little bit of Going to stir in a little bit of potting soil into the top of this to help it hold the moisture a little bit better. Um, this compost is pretty good, but it has a limited ability to retain moisture. And we've found that to be something of a problem. Uh, I will never learn to like the smell of bone meal. Yuck. <laughs> Who needs a gym when you've got potting soil bags to? you know, lift. <laughs> I'm not going to put a ton in, but I am going to put in several good scoops and the uh, actual seedlings were planted in potting soil in the seed trays. So I've been trying to get this done all week and we've been trying to balance all the different things that we have to do around existing things <laughs> with this with all the new projects now i have lettuce i have a tray of lettuce there it is this is butter crunch I have a bunch of different kinds of lettuce here. I kind of want to keep it somewhat organized because I'm really curious. Some of these are varieties we've never tried before. The first kind of lettuce I have is called Ridgeline. I'm going to stick its little label in down there. I'm just going to start pulling plugs out of the seed tray and sticking them in there. I think we got this from Haas Tools. I think this is one of the varieties we tried from them. But I could be wrong. I'll have to double check that. But I know the name of it is Ridgeline. We decided to try. We really like the Salanova lettuces, but they are expensive. They work really incredibly well for us in the winter time. I have heard good things from some folks about them holding well in the summer, but to be honest, we had less luck with them this spring than we did during the winter. Whereas we had really good luck with the, some of the other loose leaf types. So we're like, okay, well, it's hard to know what to do. I mean, you know, you're winging it <laughs> is the best way to put it. We really love lettuce. We're heavy lettuce eaters. We love salads. So I decided when I was buying seeds that we would try a few other things just to see if we could find solutions or maybe combinations that produce good solutions for us. And that's what we expect. We expect, we don't expect any magic things. We expect, <laughs> you know, um, combinations of things to work best. So there we have four little plants there. What else do I have? Of course I'm going to have some odd number because that would be too easy. They come out. <laughs> yeah, these are really pot bound. All right, now, what else do I have? I have red salad bowl. I don't know why they're calling it a red salad bowl. It is not red. 
Okay, maybe it gets redder when it gets older. Let's see how many plants I have. I have one. I have two plugs for them. All right. One. Two. Trying to be really gentle with this stuff because lettuce always seems like so incredibly deliciously fragile at this stage. And uh, really wanted to do well because we have had so many amazing salads this winter and early spring. But right now we're kind of free falling on the salads. So um, we still have greens, eating lots and lots of asparagus and peas, but uh, we still have kohlrabi and our spinach is actually, we'll have another harvest of that pretty quickly. Um, we've lost some of our spinach due to bolting and we have a bunch of baby stuff started in the garden, but that's still teeny, teeny, teeny. I won't have room in here for the Salanova, but that's okay. I'll find a different place for that one. I think for a lot of home gardeners, deciding to pull plants and move on is one of the hardest decisions ever. I know I have always struggled with it. I've always been that person who nursed plants back to health and stuff like that. But when it comes to actually growing food for your family, sometimes you just have to move on. Hoss Tools did a really good video this morning about planting squash. And one of the things he talked about in that video was having other squash coming behind so that when you get a row of squash that just isn't, you know, it's not blooming as much, the plants look tired, maybe they have an infestation of squash bugs, maybe they've got powdery mildew, whatever, well, that's sort of a situation, then it's time to pull those out. They're just becoming a reservoir for pests and disease in your garden. So being able to move on and decide that, you know, kind of like, thank you, I really appreciate what you've done for me, but it's time to leave now. Um, that's hard and it's something I've always struggled with. I have nursed many a sick houseplant back to health and that's fine with a houseplant, especially if it's something with sentimental value. But when it comes to vegetables in the garden, sometimes it's just time to move on. And the other day when I picked peas, I got two peas out of this bucket and I looked objectively at the peas for the first time and went, you know, they're just not doing that well now. I've noticed that the peas in the garden are suffering the same sort of fate as the peas in this bucket, <clears throat> where they've uh, produced very well out there, but uh, especially the peas that were planted in the gutters produced very heavily at first, and now, I mean, we planted the poor things out and immediately it hit 91 degrees, you know, so, oh, poor things. Uh, it was hard to keep them wet enough. They were miserable. So they've kind of had enough. The plants that were direct seeded have withstood the temperature a little bit better. They also did not produce at first. So they're kind of coming into their flush of uh, peas at this point. The ones that are producing a little bit, we'll leave them for now. But when we're ready to plant that bed with something else, some other new crop that's gonna give us something good, the toast. If I fertilized everything, if I coddled it, would it possibly produce more? Yes, but historically I know what happens. You wait for a week, you coddle it, you fertilize it, you fiddle with it. And meanwhile, that section of your garden is producing nothing. Now, am I a little bit more intense about it this year than usual? Yeah, but if part of this is an experiment because we wanna see what we really can do if we work hard at it. So those peas are gonna be left there until it suits us, basically. 
and when we get to the point where we need to plant something else in there, they'll simply go. The snow peas will probably stay in that location for a much longer time frame. Now, I have lived lots of places where that was not the case, where the zucchinis and the yellow squashes and the patty pans really produced all summer and solidly into the fall. Really, you didn't lose them completely until it froze in the fall. So it will depend on your individual soil quality, your individual pest load, your individual disease load, as to how fast your plants and your varieties too. Some varieties just seem to have the ability to, they may take a little break, but then they kick right back in and go to it. Some places that's not the case. So you have to make your own decisions and it's not easy at all, but it's something we're working very hard at trying to make. I hope this inspires you to get brave <laughs> Try a few new things. Decide when it's time to give up on a plant and plop something else in. You know, if you have a tomato plant or a pepper plant that's just not cutting it and you can still get good seedlings at the store, maybe it's time to replace it. But you do need to figure out why the other one wasn't cutting it. Did it have a disease? Had it been abused too much? Uh, was the soil the quality it should have been? Until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and keep on growing, keep on trying things, and write down what you did. I'm going to write myself a little essay about what we did with the peas this year because we've got some ideas for next year that are going to be a little bit different. And some of it has to do with just when we plant the things. Other things have to do with fertilizing, but we won't know until we've tried it. So that's the way gardening is. And if you can't remember what you grow, if you can't remember where you grew it, you're losing valuable information. So don't do that. So have a safe week, have a good week, and until next time, bye.